we want to find the surface area of the part of the plane that lies above the rectangular region defined here, where this first closed interval is for x, the second closed interval is for y, which means we're trying to find the surface area of this plane over this rectangular region in the xy plane. Notice how x is on the closed interval from 1 to 6, and y is on the closed interval from 0 to 3. Let's first look at this graphically. So the plane is graphed in blue, and the yellow planes define the area in the xy plane that we're concerned about. If you look down on the xy plane, we're trying to find the surface area of the blue plane over this rectangular region in the xy plane. So going back to our work, here's the formula that we use to find the surface area given by f of x comma y over a particular region r. Let's take a moment and explain where this formula comes from. It begins by approximating a surface area using parallelograms. For example, if we wanted to find the surface area of this red paraboloid, and we used parallelograms to do this, the first four parallelograms might look something like this. So again, we can use the area of these four parallelograms to approximate the surface area of the red surface. As the number of parallelograms increase, the area of the parallelograms approach the area of the actual surface. So as the number of parallelograms approach infinity, the area of the parallelograms approach the area of the actual surface. Each parallelogram can be defined by having sides given by vector u and vector v. And remember, we can find the area of a parallelogram by determining the magnitude of their cross product, which gives us this expression here. So again, as the number of parallelograms approach infinity, it gives us this double integral here that gives us a surface area of the surface over the region R in the xy plane. So going back to our example, notice how the given function f of x comma y is equal to 6 plus 5x plus 7y. Now let's work on finding our partial derivatives. So the partial with respect to x, we find the derivative with respect to x treating y as a constant. So the partial with respect to x would just be 5. Then the partial with respect to y, we differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So we have a partial with respect to y of just 7, which means the surface area is going to be equal to the double integral of the square root of 1 plus the partial with respect to x squared, that would just be 5 squared, plus the partial with respect to y squared, that would be 7 squared. And then for differential a, let's use the order of integration of dx and then dy. So the limits of integration for x would be from 1 to 6. With respect to y, we integrate from 0 to 3. So notice how we have the square root of the quantity 1 plus 25 plus 49, which would be the square root of 75. And because 75 is equal to 25 times 3, let's go ahead and write this as 5 square root 3 times a double integral. And then we just have dx dy, or if we want 1 dx dy, and again, limits of integration are from 1 to 6 for x and 0 to 3 for y. Now let's go and evaluate this on the next slide. We first integrate with respect to x, so we have 5 square root 3 times the integral from 0 to 3 of integrative of 1 with respect to x would just be x. So of course, when x is 6, we have 6. When x is 1, we have 1. So notice how this simplifies nicely to 5. 5 times 5 square root 3 would be 25 square root 3. So now we have 25 square root 3 times integral from 0 to 3 of, again, if we want 1 dy. So we have 25 square root 3. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to y would just be y. And we integrate from 0 to 3. So we have 25 square root 3 times the quantity when y is 3, we have 3. When y is 0, we have 0. So the exact surface area is equal to 75 square root 3, and this would be square units. 
Let's also get a decimal approximation though. 75 square root 3 is approximately 129.9038. And of course this is square units. So again, we just found the surface area of this blue plane over the rectangular region in the XY plane shown here. I hope you found this helpful.